I lay awake in the morning, swathed in linens too. And so strange is this thing that I know not what to do. Never before may recall can I such comfort in such things. Yet here I lay now wide awake, and yet not craving a thing. For in the stillness I find bliss, in quiet moments of mine. A spine supported, and my skin protected from the chill, by blankets swathed in droves about my chest and arms and toes. Standing, and staring, and remembering who I am, and wondering who I was, seeking definition, and as I seek it, it so too seeks me, and a million answers watch over my sheets, and crash into my mind and spill, unlocking lost memories and churning my world. The answers I seek come crashing on in, who was I, who am I, and where have I been? These recollections and new collections find their way into my wig penetrate my defenses and flare up so big and brighten the room for a moment or two before they fucking explode with such malicious doom. How do you feel now, Mr. Big Man? Still feel so dull, still feel so rad. You wanted to know how you got to be here. And so we remind you and stir up your fear. You came from that place, that nightmare, that hell, when you did all those things you can't even recall. You think that you know what it is that you did, and you think you've accepted such things as it is. But dare you to ask, and we shall dare to tell that you recall little about life in that world. A million instances we can recall of dark shame for moments locked up in the vault. Unconsciously placed there due to your sheer inability to comprehend the scale to which you add. You ask, we tell, and you forget that it was real. No, shut up! Get out of my head! I thought you conquered. I thought you dead. I thought the voices to be on decline. But as it would seem, they but bide their time. For they return voracious in this moment now. When my strength is its weakest and my supports have bowed out. You mock me to remind me I know not what's real. For I have not had a clue since the glass demon spew. The devil's own sermon served inside my head, which, by heaven rejected, had come to this bed. Of course, to such words and such promises there, I would surely be swooned by the devil's affairs. For Lucifer seduced me, and when I came in, he left me to rot beneath all of my sins. My world was turned up, turned down, and shook out, and I entered confused to never walk out. Now, since I've been sober, things have become all the more strange, as I encounter myself in fragmented visions. And unicorns seek me out just for a chat and part with their message and leave it at that, and disappear back into the twisting nether realm, never remembered nor ever to be found. And it is by this quality alone I profess their mysticism, their magiciness. For while in encounter their stature is true, their voice does not waver and they command the room. All happy thoughts run without restraint. They leave me all giddy, as though thoughts of a saint. Until he finds them. He comes in my room and he enchants my good thoughts to become so accursed. Hacking my memory for sin to string out and lock me within and lock them without. Always some new thing, some old thing which I did, or some place that I was, or some person was with. And cascading, the scene comes with vivid depiction. Runs in through my head the reel of non-fiction. Flashbacks repeating. And always some new fucking episode. How many of these things do I have locked away? Seven years of moments in total, truth be told. 
Luckily, the worst memories only take up four years of moments strung back to back. Seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, seven years of torture, four of them severe. How many moments are in every day? How many moments, you think? How many moments have passed between this line and this line? How many moments await their turn, locked away in subconscious until called forth to burn? Die and be free of pain, or live and fight your sorrow. Fuck you, damn you for turning a man's suffering into contest, a game. You know I could never resist the temptation. Night after night, I am reminded of my lost traumas. Should I bother to face them? To figure out their roots and make attempt to understand my pain? Pointless. I'm a man of the past and nothing I do in the present seems to affect my shame. Besides, that would take all the fun out of the fight. To go to bed and just fall asleep every night. Many nights, however, things aren't as bad, and the gaps in between expand rather fast. Some nights, it's easy to look and foresee a future, a near future, where pleasant dreams fill my sleep. But it is at such times that my governor tolls and reminds me the dangers of forgetting that world. I oft think it's safer to suffer these frights seized in anxiety attacks through the nights than it is to risk suffering the true terrors again. Although, in sober retrospect, I never have been one to be mindful of safeties. Yet still come times of another type, style, breed, when I'm with my new crew, yet I'm without the speed. It is in such times, sober and straight, that I feel as though I need nothing else as though it's all fucking good, and shit. It's as if I have, and I am everything, whatever I have always desired. Who I am to these people and who I am to myself is the epitomical idealization of that self-concocted character what I strove to be so long ago. It is my dreams come to be realized in actuality, and it is my true self come out to bear the fruits of my labors and the interest paid on my lifetimes of suffering. This is it. This is what it is all about. There is no higher plane of reality to exist upon than that which I exist upon now. Help me to believe in myself and help me to believe in my power. For it is my power which supports my belief and it is my belief which supports this state of bliss. Come now, hear me, reminisce. Come now, hear me, process. Come now, come one, come now, come all. Come to relinquish your burdens upon me and relax as I demonstrate the almighty power of the sober mind and cleanly body. For I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I shall be alive forevermore, for I hold the keys of life and of death. But do I hold these keys? Or are they who hold me? The centrifugal forces grow violent. I grow bold in the face of adversity. And only do I thrive in the suffering and despair. My defenses erected to protect me from myself in turn protect those from me who are without. Too much focus in. Too much focus out. No balance. Addicted 